Hello everybody and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary. Today the video you're about to watch is part of our Patreon Quilt Along series. With that Quilt Along series what we do is we actually film and you are quilting along with me every step of me quilting a custom quilt. So I hope you enjoy this and if you want to see more what we do is we release about one out of every 12 here on YouTube. Um, but if you want to see a ton more content, head over to Patreon and subscribe. I hope to see you there and enjoy the video. The top, and then the 8020 is going to be towards the back so that that way it will hang completely straight. Now, whenever I'm doing a filler or any type of an edge to edge, I always like to use my screw. I'm going to do that a tutorial on that. The ruler itself, and I want to make sure to walk my hand with the ruler so that that way I'm not holding my hand back here and the ruler is bobbing up and down and has the opportunity to go up over the ruler. Hello everybody and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary. Today we are going to start our next quilt along on this amazing piece uh, by my dear dear friend Marilyn Belford. Now these, this particular one is based in her mythology series and this is the Valkyries who um, are the riders and they are uh, the Norse, Norse goddesses of battle. I think I'm saying that right. So there, it's very interesting, their whole um, mythology around that if you want to do some research, and it's absolutely incredible. Um, so I'm going to have Rich kind of go around just so he can show you the immensity and the beauty of this particular piece. This is on a single piece. All of the applique, which we're going to get into shortly, is on this amazing um, hand dye piece. Um, and you can see that it's of course clouds and I'm going to have him zero in. We'll start over here, uh, with this particular horse and then this horse and its rider. I want you to go up real close on that, Mr. Ritchie. Okay. So again, every little piece here is applique. Every piece on her face, there's probably about 20 pieces that make up her her face there. Absolutely incredible. So just to give you a little scope and then of course let's come on over here. Let's look at this part because this is amazing. And then of course each parts of the fabric on the horse's mane is all separate fabric. The eyes are wonderful in all of these. And same thing for all of the horses, of course. And then of course, um, you know, right down to the shoe. So we have the one, two, three, the four horses. We have the three riders. And of course they are coming through the clouds because they actually ride up in the skies, which goddesses do, um, I suppose. And so now with this particular quilt, I've gone back and forth on a couple different ideas um, and I finally have, I think, concluded how I'm going to do this. Obviously, number one, let me start with this. It's going to be a double bat. It's going to be a 80-20 uh, and then it's going to also be a wool 
And the reason I'm going with the wool is because this is going to be an art gallery piece. That means that it's going to hang. And even though um, Marilyn and, and I both kind of are under the same theory with art quilts where they get rolled on a pool noodle and they get shipped that way, it'll never be folded, God willing. Um, we're still going to, I'm still going to go ahead and use the wool because the wool, if it ever does get folded in any way, shape or form, will not hold the creases. And that is the benefit of using wool. So we are going to use the wool and the wool is going to be towards the top. And then the 8020 is going to be towards the back so that that way it will hang completely straight. Now with the uh, warrior women themselves and the horses, every bit of this is going to be ditched. And I mean, every little piece of this is going to be ditched, which is how I typically handle, um, when Marilyn and I do work together. I like to make sure that all of her amazing applique and piecing has the opportunity to pop forward because that's going to be faux trapunto. So here were the two options for the background that I came up with if we want to go out. Let's go out on that. Since they are riding through the sky, one of my thoughts was that I was going to go ahead and locate the center point and I was going to use a giant compass uh, Renee Hadidin's um, rays um, her wonderful tool that you use to do that the giant one and I was going to do um, diagonal lines out all the way around it so it looked like a target point behind my problem is that what I do not want if I did that would be any sort of puckering near where the applique is added to the background. And I think if I did that and that only in the background, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna end up with just a little bit of puckering where that applique is going. So I have changed over to how I traditionally handle a lot of her quilts. And that is once I get everything applique and trapuntoed here with the horses and the riders, I am going to go ahead and I will be changing colors of thread for the different parts of the sky. You can see this wonderful light areas down here. Um, and with that light area, with the sun showing through, I'm probably going to go ahead and I'm gonna ditch around with a matching thread. This particular cloud here and I will probably do something in there, whether it be some echoing in to kind of make that um, pop forward rather than recede. I, I haven't quite decided whether I should recede it or whether I should pop it forward. Um, because it's the sun shining through the cloud, I might go ahead and put filler in it so it's tucked back because the, sun, the clouds here would be in the foreground. Um, and then what I'm going to do is in some of the different areas of clouds that are obvious, what I might do, like, for example, in this particular form of clouds, I might go in here just to add some interest. And once I ditch around that area and then do echo quilting in there, I may go ahead in there with exact matching thread and I may do either straight line straight across at half inch or quarter inch, or I may do half inch cross hatch in that area just to kind of give it a little bit of interest there um, in this upper pink area up here uh, i believe what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to do some nice swirl filling i am going to make sure around the applique to go in and i'll be changing thread colors throughout and i'm going to be putting in filler around each of these areas so that that way again i don't want there to be any puckering um so that's kind of how i'm going to handle that and i'm going to do it just a little bit tighter around here and then as i move out uh, whatever filler i choose to use i'll go a little bit more now i'm thinking with the um i'm thinking with the filler aside from swirl on this one i might add some sort of feather work in this. I love it just because of the feminine energy. Um, but I might make the feathers a little more stylized 
maybe a little bit more um, gothic, give it a little bit more of a different feel to it um, than the traditional rounded feathers. Uh, so we'll see on that. I haven't quite decided, but we will see what's going to happen and what I'm going to do when we do get to the machine. So anyways, that is my plan thus far. I'm going to load this. The backing is going to be a hand die. I have, I have done a beautiful custom hand die on this uh, with all of these colors in it, but much more intense uh, because I did want that backing to really bring this thing alive. Like I said, I'm sure this is going to be in a gallery for for hopefully many, many decades to come. So we'll go from there and um, we'll see how this works out. Uh, I am thinking of using some metallic uh, to do silver metallic in the spears, um, just to kind of add a little bit of shimmer to that. And same thing in the crown. I believe I'm probably gonna use a little bit of gold metallic in the crown and on their bracelets. Um, and on their golden parts of their shoes. Um, but aside for that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a thread that's gonna um, blend in uh, and like the metallic last forever. I'm not gonna be using cotton on this. I'll be using a nice 40 weight poly, uh, probably uh, a combination of isocord or glide 40 weight poly. Um, and then the metallic that I will use will either be the um, superior metallic or I will be using the glide metallic, which is, I believe, called Affinity, I believe is the name of it. I'm not sure exactly, but um, that's it. And when we get to quilting that section, if I'm wrong, I will share which one of those that I chose to use. So that's my idea, and that's our introduction. So... There we go. I'm going to get this loaded on the machine and then we will be quilting this together.